Carney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've, they've released, uh, Rovers have released photos this evening of Todd Carney at training today. So he has been uh, having a run out on the, on the pitch. So been uh, taking some photos. and Was it on the pitch at Craven Park? Because yeah. That pitch was patchy as shit. Like Huddersfield well, got a they had, they had, of their pitch they had a, after they the had a, yeah. concert. Well, they had well, concerts on it the week well, before d- as yeah, well. Yeah, but were the concerts like staged just intermittently across the pitch? Because <laughs> it wasn't like one clear area of damage. It was just patches all over the show. I after think what that is from the DW is when, the is when they put, this was a weird, weird pitch. It's where they that. put the. Um, it's where they put the. Like the sound box, and yeah. you know how you, know, you, you get your stage down one, and then you get the sound box, and you normally have a trail of cables that lead from the stage to the sound box. Yeah, so that's kind of your patch and whatever that goes across. But yeah, I mean, echo Tom's point on Mossy. I just thought he's uh, the, from what I heard on the radio that I had in my ear on front and what I was watching on the highlights. He just for me he just missed too many tackles it's just very simple he just missed too many tackles you look at every scoring event or significant thing and there he is flapping his hands around in someone's face because he's missed a tackle yeah and it's just and I, and it's partly we've we've used him to we've effectively burnt him out this year but it's just sad it just annoys me because you know he he has well, got that slightly now, better yeah, he is, he's picked up him. a ban from this game, didn't he? Danny Maguire picked up a one-game ban, and also it was the third player who got a ban. Uh, Greenwood. Yeah, James Greenwood. Yeah, he got two matches, didn't he? Got two matches. So yeah, which doesn't help us because I think we've got we had a chance. The Rex will be back thought. in though, won't he, next week? Yeah, he'll be he'll be back. So we'll have we'll have the full grub side out with him uh, and the Carnies. Um. <laughs> yeah, definitely Hull Kingston Rectums all out in force um, in terms of the, the game I, I only really saw the try highlights of, of, and, and seen the match review but um, I think a positive for before we talk about the wire a positive for the for the Robins was um, Elliot Wallace grabbing a, a brace he showed a little bit of spatial awareness finishing ability and that sort of stuff and this kid is young this kid has got a long way to go before he's the finished article but um real good signs yeah he, he you know he's, he's someone who you think you, you could could really kick on if he's given the right opportunities and develops in the right way again it was just classic rovers for me that we just we had a chance and if we if we got a win in it, you know, who knows where it could have it could really put some questions in and then just snatched it away it's just in the way that only you know we can we yeah. how many chances do we do we need I get the sense, though, that Warrington were able to kind of build a lot of pressure in the game and and then made that pay at the end. So they were probably yeah, the physical, was, physically very... stronger game, side in the game and stuff, but they made that pay with the last 15-minute run where they banged over um, a couple of tries, a couple of soft-looking tries. And they got I mean. a couple of back-to-back sets at, at crucial yeah. times as well that kind of just put them in that front. And I think heads did drop a bit because they just got fed up of, of having to defend that. And, and it was a real long shot anyway, well. weren't it, for, for it was, yeah. to, to not be consigned to the eights after this game. And with uh, they, they put in a plucky performance. I mean, they were it got to 20-22, so Warrington were just two points ahead uh, with 15 minutes or so to go. But... Then they got, like I say, a couple of soft-looking tries. Probably the platform was set because it does look like like Wire were applying the pressure and had a few chances that went begging as well as um, the tries that they did. Yeah, score. they did. Yeah. yeah, there was there was there was a few ones that from you know BBC Humberside commentary got very excited about, and you, you kind of thought, is, is that a track now? Okay, you've calmed down now. Stephen um, Rashford coming up good for them again as well. I mean we've talked about maybe he doesn't always inject great pace into the proceedings but he's got such a range of skill set that it, it's hard to keep him out of it if your pack is laying a platform isn't it and, and he's really yeah. really running free at the moment taking chances um being creative and and i think you know you, you've got to say he's really blossomed into wanting to be england's number one almost uh because he's really in form, really in form. 
Yeah, he's 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 and he has been for multiple times. Mm. Yeah, he keeps popping up, doesn't he, on the uh, sort of best picks of the game every every match review I read on them. Okay, stats then. They suggest Hulk KR hurt themselves with an 88% team tackle success and an extra error and three extra penalties conceded. They only have one fewer break than Warrington, but the Wire did have nearly 300 more metres at 1.5 metres per carry better average game. That's kind of what we're talking about. Maybe the, the war, the Robins down a little bit there. Individually, Steph Ratchford, a try, six tackles, 200 metres. Mike Cooper, a try. Another try for Mike Cooper. He's getting one every other game. Cashing in, yeah. 154 metres. Joshua Charnley, 134 metres, so kind of on a drought for him in his Warrington days, two tra- two, two games in a row, but um, still a uh, decent effort. Daryl Clark, three try assists, six tackles, 122 metres. It does say here he picked up a rib injury late on in the game. I hope that's not too serious um, from if, if, if you're a Warrington fan because he, he's been fantastic. For the Rovers, Elliot Wallace, two tries, six tackles, two clean breaks. Rob Mulhern, a try, 41 tackles, 10 marker tackles, so both ways from Big Rob. Chris Atkin, a try and 101 metres. James Greenwood, 103 metres. So a few players just scra- scraping into the stats round. Just getting in there. Yeah, but so yeah. There some, some reasonable performers. Rob Mulhern stands out. If he doesn't clean up at the end of season awards, other than whatever um, award Bobby Blair will get for being like fans' favourite. Existing, yeah. 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 <laughs> just oh. just being, being in our world, yeah. Okay. Um, the hollowest of of nillings <laughs> happened as well on Friday night at Headingley, uh, where it, it was. Finished. It was Ryan. Given the shirts, it was Rhinos against Spearmint Rhinos, wasn't it? <laughs> um, it finished Leeds thirty-four, Witness Vikings nil in front of nearly eleven thousand ten nine seven seven officially. James Child was the referee, and um, we had a few people get in touch. Yeah, Paul O'Brien, PAB1976, said another loss from the Vikings. It's hard to see where our next win will come from. Is that, what is that in a row now? Like 15, 16? Oh, I, I don't, for, p- for people like Paul's sake, I don't want to work it out because I, I feel bad for him. Yeah. Uh, Cutthroat Jake said, great performance from all the pack. If Parcel is being returned to sender in the off season, Dwyer has stepped up and shown he is an ample replacement. <laughs> It may have been only against witness, but attacking joy and adventurism appears to be returning. Now all we need is for Catalans and Hull to do us a favour and we'll miss the middle eights. Um, um, <laughs> we'll we'll see how you do. We'll see how you do, John. <laughs> so Rich Wilkinson says, too little too late from Leeds. Oh, joy. The fun of the middle eights. Poo emoji. Yeah, I... Really, I've I've seen the highlights and the two things that stand out are the tries from both of the hookers for the Leeds Rhinos and just how preventable those tries were um, from from a witness point from, of view. And from looking at the highlights, so Richie, Richie Myler contributed as well. And he, he got involved and he was in and around. And that's why is this that's why is the scrum off in the bottom four dream team, Tim? He's one, yeah. And John Moon seemed to have a bit more zip about him. Do you think that's because he had a lot of space in this game? Because I, obviously... I think part of it was yeah he was able he was probably a bit free and he's probably told to just go you know just go and play don't worry about your defence as much or worry about everybody else just go and express yourself. Well, they started more. they started with a pretty heavy set in the Garbutt, Singleton, Cuthbertson all all on from the start for the Rhinos. Singleton, Singleton as captain, and they had. Crosby in to bring it to play his debut off the bench and the Adeleski as well. So that's that's the size there. Whereas the as well. Whereas you're kind of looking at the Vikings and Gil Dudson I don't think is fit. Had Chapel Howe underwhelms. McGrath Luluai I just don't <laughs> feel like I can't say McGrath Luluai without laughing. I don't feel like he's a Super League player. Wellington Elbert isn't isn't consistently physical even though he is physical when he, he does it right but it's been so inconsistent as far as I've from what I've gathered from a, a witness perspective this season so that, that just leaves Jay Chapel how is absolutely gassed from putting in 50 or 60 tackles a game um, so so I kind of feel like it was one for the Rhinos to finally win in the pack with the big three front rowers in particular all on board from the start of this game and, and that's kind of as it told and the, basically when you put zippy players behind that and Joel Moon offers that as much as Dwyer and Parcel do that off the cuff zip that ability to be, to glide through a tackle sort of 
take an arm and it's, it's see witness you later worst, to it because it's a nightmare in some yeah. respects that it's, it's what they couldn't I mean they can't defend much particularly well anyway but it's what yeah. they couldn't defend against was that unpredictability they, they needed someone to come and play that was just going to yeah. run lines at them and two and that wasn't gonna in the game one when the game was kind of dead but didn't help did it yeah well a hierarchy what a surprise <laughs> Who was he fighting? So I don't know from the match review. <laughs> I don't know who he was fighting, but he was fighting. It doesn't say. I mean, it yeah. really wouldn't surprise surprise you if it was one of his own players, would it? <laughs> the way he or, or just himself? Yeah. Um, just, uh, do you care? That's a genuine question. If you punch yourself in the head. Does it still count as the other well, card? Is it? Kenny Edwards was spared. Uh, the moral vacuum was spared a sim minimum, weren't he, the other week when he came in all guns blazing, all arms swinging, but only Just, took his own players' heads off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you pick up anything else from this one, Tim? No, I watched. I mean, I just I saw the, saw the highlights and just saw. I mean, really, witness torn to shreds as much as anything, and that there was effort there, but it was just in the wrong places, and it just, the structure would, had been broken. It just looked. It looked like the whole game was kind of when you see a yeah. side that's a man or two down and just loses their head a bit towards the end of a game and concedes for 20 points quite quickly. But it looked like it was that from yeah, 15 it's, minutes in. It's, it's difficult to see, like like Paul said, difficult to see where the next win's coming from. For me, it's difficult we, to see we, where the momentum's are, coming yeah. in with that we, pack. I mean, look at the look at the packs they're going to face, and I kind of feel like they're going to be coming up against more experienced packs from the league below, I suppose. They might want to try and get if Lee do make it. They want to get them out of the way early doors. They want to get how they want you know they want to have um, they want to have they want to get it when they've got their big guns back. You know, Hep Kale I think is probably gone, isn't he, for the season? But they want to have as much as they can have back. They don't want to be going into the the game with Ted Chapel Howe and McGrath Lula in your middles. They need to get. I, I mean, Houston was named in named in the squad, so if they can get him back. Yeah, and Alberson's been good for them this season, but he missed yeah. out. Um, maybe they're saving some of those blokes, uh, keeping some gas in the tank. Okay, below a thousand meters and ninety percent below ninety percent percent tackle success isn't a good combination for witness despite scoring no points they did manage five breaks, but Leeds had nine and nearly twice as many meters at over a meter per carry better average gain. Uh, individually, Matt Parcel with a try, two try assists, one hundred and sixteen meters. Brad, Brad Dwyer said, I see that, and I raise you a try. Nine tackle boss, 173 metres, two clean breaks. Luke Briscoe continues to impress on loan slash whatever he is. One yeah. try. And <laughs> Bring, bringing it in, metres. Yeah. And Jack Walker was a live wire in this one, and he started to spark up in terms of his try productivity, and I think against slightly lesser prepared opposition in, in the championship sides that he's going to be facing, He's instinctive. Oh. He's got that instinctivity, yeah. hasn't he? That he can, if that's even a word, that he can just spark something out of nowhere. And I think, I think Leeds will be will be okay. I don't think they're in considerable danger, mainly because I think there's enough chaff underneath that's gonna gonna be gonna be below them. Yes, uh, one try, fourteen tackle bus, fourteen tackle bus, one hundred and sixty nine meters <laughs> and three clean breaks for the youngster there, for the losing. Vikings still some valiant efforts that they can hang the hats on. Charlie Runciman 109 meters, Danny Walker 46 tackles and 10 marker tackles, and Matt Whitley 46 tackles. Uh, no, Matt Will kind of no surprises in those three names yeah. for the bottom four dream team. Okay, Friday night's televised game, um, and I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed watching this one. It was Castleford. It was enjoyable, wasn't it? Castle 18, Huddersfield 32. It finished. It was 18 all at half time. Very exciting first half to watch. Only 5,406 turned up to watch the uh, champions in this one. Chris Kendall was the referee. Uh, we had quite a few views in on this one. Do you want to take us away with Brian Davies to kick it off? Yeah, Brian says Giants showed what a good side they are by coming back from 12 0 down. Jerry was awesome again. Every time he gets the ball, something happens. Giants might make the top. Might make the top four. They have 16 points available, and with the top eight playing each other, they could do it. I mean, that's unthinkable in a way, isn't it? But they could. Yeah, uh, this is the is, this is the alternate point actually to it that Rich Langley puts put, puts forward. And it's really interesting to balance the two views off. He says Cass looking tired and Hud desperate to avoid a shootout next week. Have to say, Hud's look good, but my money is on them kicking back for the rest of the games. Now they're safe. Uh, there was a. There was a very tangible sense of relief at the end, and 
for the, for the, you could, the see, I mean, you could see it when they cut Ken Davies' face, couldn't it? Mm. Couldn't you? That he was just relieved they didn't have to go through the yeah the emotion of it all as much as anything. 